So today we're going to have a look at how we're going to enter bivariate data into our Casio calculator. It's a fairly simple process if we know what we're looking for. So I'm going to show you and hopefully at the end of this you'll find it easier. So what is bivariate data? Well it's data um, which is information about two variables. For instance, we're looking at the heights and weights of people. I'm going to make it a fairly simple one. Obviously there can be a lot more data that we're going to enter in, but at least we can see what the process will be. So, we use the data to see if there is any relationship between the two variables, or there might be, not be any relationship at all. For instance, with the actual relationship is what we call the correlation coefficient. That's how we measure if there is any relationship. And this can be seen later on. If there is a relationship, if there's one that exists, then we can actually have a line of best fit that we can use to then make predictions. And that's what we usually do with statistics and data. We usually try to use it to make some sort of prediction in the future. So let's turn to an example. We're going to have a look at the heights and weights of 10 students. So we have one student here who was 179 centimetres tall and they were weighed 60 kilograms. The next student, 165 centimetres tall and 55 kilograms. So these heights and their weights make sure that they line up. And you can actually collect your own data and do this type of information also. Okay, so what I've got here is our Casio calculator. And we're going to have a look at how we put that data into our calculator. So first of all, we're going to put mode and put it in statistics. And you'll notice up here that we've got an A plus BX. That is our bivariate data that we want to choose. So we're going to select two. And when we do that, we have our two columns for our first set of data, which in this case will be our heights, and our second set of data, which will be our weights. Now, some of you, when you turn this on, you'll have actually a third column, which is a frequency column. It doesn't matter if that's on or off, but if you have forgotten how to do that, shift, mode, arrow down, our statistics, which is three, I can turn my frequency on, and you might already have that frequency column there. So if it's already on, it doesn't matter. So don't panic about it. So I'll just leave it on and show you that it's not going to affect our data. So our first one, our first height is 179. Press equals afterwards and you can see that it appears. Let's keep entering our heights, 165. Then we've got 160, 179, 152, 168, another 168. So pressing equals after each one, 165 and 168 again. There's our ninth one, and our tenth one is 166. Press equals after it, and it automatically pops down to our eleventh one, which we don't need. And I find the quickest way to get back up is to actually arrow down, goes back up to number one, going across to our weight column, and let's make sure that 179 lines up with 60. So I put our 60 equals, and it's next to it for our first person. So it's important that our heights and weights correlate there, so they're matching. So our 165 was 55, then 58, then 67, then 48, then 64, then 61, then 52, then 65, and our last one, 55. Make sure we press equals after that one. Again, just ignore the frequency. It's not going to affect it. And the weird thing we do once we've entered our data there is to press the all clear button so it's off our screen. Now that we've done that, then we can have a look at what we can recall from our data. So again, written in yellow above our number one, press shift and one. And we have our, we've got six selections there. Well, we're going to have a look at how we find the correlation coefficient. So let's go to our regression part, which is our number five. And we have five selections there. R is our correlation coefficient. So if we press three, then equals, 
and we end up with our correlation coefficient there. So we should end up with that. What I want you to make sure you is you can enter that data and end up with the same result. Because quite often people think that they've entered the data incorrectly and end up with a slightly different answer there. So what you need to do is just make sure that you end up with that. So give that a try and then we're going to have a look at some other things in just a moment. So that's our correlation coefficient and that measures how strong there is a relationship between our heights and our weights. As you can see that it's positive, so that means as our heights increase generally so do our weights. Okay, uh, and because it's a 0 0.7, it's a fairly strong relationship there. So some other information we may be interested in is to come back here to our regression which is 5 and find our A value. So if we press our 1 and equals, we get our A value is negative 34 point etc. So write the whole thing down. And then we're also interested in our regression for our B value. So and again we write that all down. So how does it all help us? Well, if we remember when we made our selection for our bivariate data to enter it in the calculator, we looked at that part, made our selection for number two. Okay, that's really important because that helps us with our uh, line of least squares best fit. So that's um, that's important, and we'll look at that later on. That's not the only data we can get from that. So if we actually have a look at back in here, shift stat. And we actually go back to our variable, which is we probably used to define the mean and the standard deviations. So if we go to four and we can find the mean, we've got two means there. That's because we've got two sets of data in there. So our first one there, if we press two and equals, that tells us the mean height out of our 10. So our mean height was 167 centimeters. And if we do something similar, and go back to our number four, and we've got our standard deviation for our heights. So let's find our number four and equals, and there we get our standard deviation of the heights of those 10 people. And if we do something similar for our weights, and we go for our mean for our weights, there's our mean for our weights, so five equals, so there's our mean of our weights, 58.5 kilograms. And then what we can do is find our standard deviation of those. So again, come to our number four for variables, our standard deviation for our, our weights there is number seven. And there we go, we write that all down. Okay, so that's how we do that. There's something that we do have to remember though, once we've finished with all our data, that we make sure that we change our calculator out of statistics mode because if we don't, our fraction template won't work. So it's important that when you finish with your statistical data, if for some reason your calculator doesn't show your um, particular uh, fraction template, then you've probably still got the stat on the screen of your calculator. What do I mean by all of that? All well, that's clear. There's my statistics still on my calculator. So if I go and press the fraction template, you notice it doesn't work anymore. Okay, I end up with that vinculum line there for our fraction. So I need to make sure that I go to mode, come to number one, our stat mode's now off, my fraction template now works. Okay, so just remember that. So if all of a sudden you get that little vinculum line in there, Okay, then it means you're probably still in this stat mode. Okay, I hope you found this beneficial. And you, what you need to do is make sure you practice and get those same answers that I just showed you. Thanks for watching.